Okay, so we would have looked at the series circuit before and we have discussed its characteristics. Now we're going to move on to the parallel circuit and we're going to be discussing the characteristics of a parallel circuit. And again, we have our components laid out just like we would have them in our circuit diagram. Um, so let's go through our components real quick. So we have a battery right here, a switch. This is a ammeter, right, A1, another ammeter A2, and we have another ammeter A3. And then we have these two voltmeters, and then we have our resistors uh, R1 and R2. And again, we have this ground signal, right, to ensure that I mean, this circuit will work in this simulation. So we would have talked about how to connect uh, components such as ammeter and voltmeters in a circuit. But what we need to actually discuss in this case is since we're dealing with a parallel circuit, we need to start a come to an appreciation to as to what a parallel circuit is, right? So a parallel circuit is basically a circuit in which the components are connected across each other or parallel to each other. And whenever we have a parallel circuit, it sets up a, sets up a situation in which we have two paths, or more than one path, I should say, in which current can flow, right? So in this case, we have two resistors in parallel, so therefore we're gonna have two paths that current can flow. So we're going to actually look at what happens to the current when we have a parallel circuit and also what happens to the potential difference across the devices whenever we have a parallel circuit. So let's start by connecting up to our circuit. Alright, so again we have our components connected up and you notice again i didn't connect the voltmeters right because i want to ensure that i have checked the circuit before before i connect the voltmeters and again voltmeters are connected across the device so they don't need to be connected into the circuit but ammeters they need to be connected into the circuit so we have ammeter a1 right here which measures the current coming from the battery then we have ammeter a2 which will measure the current flowing through r1 and we have another ammeter A3, and this is measuring the current flowing through R2, right? So everything seems to be okay. We have positive to positive. This is positive, and it's connected all the way to positive. This is positive again as well, and it, con and it is connected all the way around to positive. So we have everything connected up okay, so we can actually do now the electrical test. So I'm going to activate the simulation and then close my switch. Right? So when I close the switch, I see that there's a current flow here, so I know that everything is working fine. So I'm going to turn off my circuit and now connect up the voltmeters. And again, the voltmeters will be parallel because this V1, voltmeter 1, will measure the PD across R1. and V2 measures the PD. Okay, so now everything is connected. Let me open back the switch, right, before I activate the circuit. So again, everything is now connected, okay. So again, A1 will measure the current coming from the source. A2 measures the current flowing through R1, and A3 measures the current flowing through R2, while V1 will measure the PD across R1 and V2 measures the PD across R2. So let's now activate the simulation, right? And then I can close my switch, right? And obtain my values. So here we see that the current coming from the battery is 2.515 amperes, right? Then the current meets this junction and it can actually go two parts. It can go here, and you can also go here. So what we see happen is that when we check the ammeter here, we get 1.515 amperes, and for this one, we get one ampere. So therefore, it means that whenever the current comes to this junction, some of it flows here. So what we have is that the current comes to this junction, some of it flows through R1, and some of it flows through R2. Right, and we're actually seeing the values in terms of what the amount of current that flows in R1 is displayed here, 
an amount of current that flows in R2 is also displayed here. Right? So what we see is that the current, when it meets here, it basically splits and some flows here and some flows in this way. And you can remember and you can remember from Ohm's law where it says that the current flowing through a resistor is directly proportional to the voltage drop across the resistor and inversely proportional to the resistance of the resistor. So therefore what that means is that whenever we have the current splitting right here, some will flow here and some will flow here. Right? And the amount of current that flows in each of these, we could say branches, right, is dependent on the is dependent on the resistance of the resistor. So if you notice, for R1, the current flowing is 1.5 amps. Right? For R2, the current flowing is 1 amp. So therefore, what we see is that the branch with the larger resistor receives the smaller current flowing. So since R2 is 5 ohm, we have less current flowing in this branch. While in this case, R1 is 3.3 ohms, so we have approximately 1.5 amps flowing in that arm, right? So what we see is that the current will split and the amount of cl current flowing in each arm will be dependent on the resistance of the resistor, right? And the arm or the branch with the smaller value for the resistor, for the resistance, will have the greater current flowing in that arm, right? And also we can actually look at the PD across each resistor, right? Now we notice that the PD across R1 is 5 volts and the PD across R2 is also 5 volts so therefore what we see is that the current so therefore what we see is that the voltage from the battery is uh, is the same it remains the same for both parallel arms right so since these resistors are in parallel they're going to receive the same voltage right so we have 5 volts coming from the source so we're going to have 5 volts a PD of 5 volts dropped across R1 and also a PD of 5 volts dropped across R2. So this basically demonstrates to us what we can observe in a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, right, the current is shared between the branches, right, while the PD is the same across the branches, right. So again, Junior Roberts here, realjuniorroberts.com. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you. Share this so others can benefit and thank you for watching.